Hi, everybody. Oh, I just read The Big Leap. Oh, I came upon this book because I was in, I was in my networking group. Um, I'm a member of uh, We Should All Be Millionaires. Rachel Rogers is highly impactful, highly incredible networking group. And I should say networking system, I should say support group, uh, business learning system. It's so many things at once. Um, and I showed up and reported my mind trash, reported what's going on, reported my powerlessness, reported everything that was not okay with where my business was and, and what I was going through. And overwhelmingly, the response was, you need to read The Big Leap. You need to read The Big Leap. It's in her book. She says, I read The Big Leap. You should too. I read her book in December of 2021. So I had plenty of time to read it, but I think it's always a great idea to do something when you know that you need to do it, not when it's like you should do it or best practices. And that's only because you're going to really take it in with more openness because you are taking it in out of need rather than out of compliance. And I'm sitting there and I, I read the book and it's Sunday. And so my Sundays are unplugged. I make the exception right now for um, reaching out uh, with you guys, for connecting with you guys, because I am in this place of, of drive and hunger for awareness. And I, I really want to make it as possible for my population who I serve, I wanna make it as possible as it can be, as easy as it can be for you to find me. And so as always, if you're watching this video and you may not need help, but you know somebody who is suffering from acute PMS, is suffering from immense menstrual pain, of all kinds, is diagnosed with endometriosis, PCOS, PMDD, diagnosis or not, we all are in pain. And because of the way society sees menstrual pain, we unconsciously develop a threshold for pain that is incredibly high and is incredibly dangerous. So please, Get my video, get me to people who need help because I am all about that. And I have not been saying fibroids and I'm, I'm adding fibroids to the mix because that is definitely happening. And they are just as much a symptom of imbalance as any of the other things that I have described. And so let me get back to the topic, which is about the big leap and Gay Hendricks describes this thing called upper limiting, and it typically comes on the heels of something awesome, like being pulled of your potential or being or having a break, a great breakthrough in your life or having some kind of positive thing happen. And because that positive thing might make room for more positive things, which might push us forward out of our comfort zone because most of us can only tolerate so much um, positive positivity, so many good things because we learn as children. And it's not our parents' fault, by the way. It's just that we take something in and we might take it in negatively. We create a story about it and then we model that story and we recreate that story for years until life intervenes on us in a drastic enough way, in an impactful enough way that it makes us snap out of it and change the way that we are. Um, in that process, we create upper limits for how much joy we're allowed to have before we think that he called it cognitive dissonance. I think of that moment where you drive a car at a speed limit, at a speed that is too um, too fast for the car. So the entire car starts to shake because it can't, it literally can't contain itself at that speed. And that's how upper limiting feels. And in order to pump the brakes, in order to 
lessen the speed, which we might equate to positive energy and feeling this nudge to continue forward on this path and this feeling this thing that's opening up that is just more joy to more joy because things are always flowing, um, then what happens is, and that might even be life ushering us forward, then we will upper limit ourselves by indulging in worry, indulging in criticism, indulging in blame, squabbling. We create a barrier to keep ourselves in spheres that are more normal so that we can blend in, right? So spheres of excellence, not of our genius, but of our excellence, sphere of competency and then sphere of incompetency. And one of the things that he described as an upper limit behavior is sickness. He called it prevention. No. I don't remember. Oh, I have my notes right here. Let me see. I took a lot of notes. Yes, punishment, prevention, and protection. And one of the ways that we can indulge or engage in punishment, prevention, and protection is with sickness. And we as feminine energy bias beings, we are incredibly amazing. We are so powerful in our beingness. So it is innate to us that we be, that is our that is the beginning of our zone of genius is in our beingness. And so a lot of things come to us easily and that feels positive. That feels good. When that thing comes to us, then we say, whoa, what if, and we have an idea and it's really awesome and it's a great idea. And so those of us who suffer with menstrual imbalance, what we can do is we can call in punishment, protection, pre prevention. We can call those three in by having our menstrual imbalance, by keeping our menstrual imbalance, because that holds us back. Right when we were about to soar or fly, all of a sudden we're sick and we can't. And we can't be in alignment with what we came to this planet to do because each of us came to this planet to exist, to use his language, because I really like it, sphere of genius, to exist in our sphere of genius. We came here to do something to genius, genie, right? Genie, genie, make your wishes. You have three wishes. Your wish is my command. We can wish and create the thing that we want. We can be our own genies. That's us working in our sphere of genius. We can be our, the genies for others. That's us working in our sphere of genius. But because that feels good, because that is positive, because we are in alignment with ourselves, because our majesty might be bigger than what we maybe decided our upper limit was, then we kneecap ourselves. And the way that we do that is we hide in the pain of, of menstrual imbalance. And this is done unconsciously. This is not victim blaming. It's an unconscious act that we do because we might have been told subversively or very obviously, very clearly, you are not allowed to succeed. And we take that vow. And then what we do is we, we make sure that we don't succeed. But that dissonance between our alignment and what we came to this planet to do and what we are doing, that causes an holistic imbalance, which you've heard me talk about a thousand times. This this um, gay Hendrix business with the big leap is great. It just underscores what I've been saying. Because when we're not in our sphere of genius, we are not happy. That unhappiness we normalize and we normalize that and we stay safe and everybody else stays safe because we're not rocking their boat. We're not breaking the status quo. We're not doing what we came here to do. And the double whammy, for the menstruators is that we are paying for it so hard. We pay for it in pain. We pay for it in, in volatility of our emotions, PMS. We pay for it in fertility issues. We pay for it with a hysterectomy because the, just because we mute the pain with birth control or with SSRIs for the volatile, volatile emotions, 
our body, our womb is still disintegrating. And as it is becoming sicker and sicker, because it's being ignored now, and so we don't even have a way to connect and know what's going on, eventually the pain does pierce through all of that stuff. And then the hysterectomy becomes the solution. When that would have been okay a year ago, but now there is a solution. So it's not okay. Medical solution for medical problem, absolutely. But what if the problem is not medical? What if the problem is in holistic self imbalance? And so we solve it by holistically nourishing our whole being. And then we test it and then it works and then it works again and it works again. Can you tell that I'm in soldier phase? Boy, oh boy, oh boy, am I dogmatic AF. Oh, don't worry, peacemaker phase is coming very soon. I can feel it transitioning and I'll be much nicer. But I really do hope you heard my message because it's just not, it's, it's not okay what we do to ourselves. And it's not okay what we say to ourselves, what we say to each other. Well, as a business owner, I am not going to, who's going to take up the slack? It's not my fault that your body doesn't, that you're not lucky. Who's going to take up the slack? That is a quote of a female business owner. It is always true. We are hardest on ourselves. And I shouldn't say female. I should say cis identifying um, woman, cis woman. But the point is that all of it needs to stop. And when we take care of ourselves and we get into wholeness, into whole wellness, we can roar. And then these people who want to complain, they'll have to find something else to complain about because we are too busy thriving in our sphere of genius. Join me. Let's start a movement. <laughs>